the Desert Line project is, 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 is a non-profit um, and, and our role really is to, um, is to provide the scientific um, information uh, about the lion population. So um, uh, we, uh, I, I see um, myself and Desert Lion being part of a team um, uh, of people in Namibia and, and throughout the world. Um, that's concerned about uh, protecting the environment and conserving um, the lion population and the tourism uh, activities and, and the local communities living in that area. Um, so a, a team like that would consist obviously of the government, the Ministry of Environment, the entire tourism industry, the tour, tourism operators that live in that area, operate in that area, um, the, the local communities, the conservancies and, and the individuals that live there. And then uh, on top of that, there, there are a number of other NGOs, uh, you know, that, that work with uh, community development like IODNC, um, uh, the umbrella tourism organizations like Tosco, and everybody has a role to play. Um, and so Desert Lion, uh, our role is, is to provide sound, good scientific data, a, a, a sound basis of understanding of the lion population that's based on, on good science. Uh, so it's not about opinions and, and about feeling or it's about facts. Um, and uh, to provide that information in such a way that, it, that it's congestible and, and implementable in, at, at this level. So it's really a partnership thing, and, and uh, our role is, is, is to provide that. Uh, also, you know, in terms of, of, of problematic situations, dealing with the conflict situations, uh, the experience that Desert Lions have gained over the years is often very helpful to find solutions mm -hmm. to a, a particular problem. Uh, and that I, I see very much as, as our role. So um, if we can just a little bit look into the future, you know, what do you... What, how do you see the future of the Desert Lions? Look, I see the, the future of the Desert Lions um, uh, has, got, has got problems in terms of finding a balance um, uh, within this very arid, very sort of fluctuating uh, ecosystem and living with people. Um, it is, it's a major conflict. It's, a, it's, a, it's an area that's incredibly arid, the resources are scarce and the balance between wildlife and, and, and livestock farming in the area is, 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 a, um, is a difficult balance to, to maintain. Um, but the fact that you know, all the parties uh, have the same goal, have the same interest and, and there's an enormous amount of of collaboration um, and assistance that is provided for for the various parties, it's particularly the conservancies and the, the local communities that live on the land. Mm -hmm. We're collecting, you know, a lot of information on the movement patterns of the lines. So we we've gained a really good understanding of why these conflict problems occur, um, and then how to 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 solve them, uh, you know, effectively. We will look. We will never be able to prevent all livestock losses uh, and, and all conflicts. But if we can minimise it to a manageable level, um, a manageable level where the income generated uh, uh, from the lions through tourism exceeds the losses financially and also the personal impact that it has, if if we can if we can reach that balance, which I really do believe we we have. Um, you know, the future for lion conservation and their role in this ecosystem is, is really good. A lion, for instance, what is its value, uh, monetary value, the spin-off? How many people see it? How many tourists see it per, per, per animal, per annum? How, you know, what is its actual value? Um, and, and then you get to really pretty high values, financial dollars, cents values, um, but that, that is almost an esoteric figure for a guy who's sitting down here farming and a lion's just come and killed one of his five remaining cattle. So, you know, while we, while we have to deal with that, that value in the long term, we have to 
assist and back up the guy on the ground at the moment. We have to provide that support to him. Yeah, I'm going to go back quite a few years. You know, we, we're now having what, I think we're going into our eighth year of drought. And about four years into this drought, we, we realized that prey species numbers were starting to go down. Because of the drought at that time, you tend to have um, a double whammy. It's not just mortality, animals dying because there's no food for them. But they actually, because there's not sufficient nutrition, they don't reproduce. I mean, you get that in farming as well. If you don't give a, an, enough nutrients, the animals don't reproduce. So, of course, as, as prey species numbers went down, um, your, your normal um, population dynamics, which most people are aware of, numbers increase of prey species, a delay, and then your, your predator numbers also increase, and the same happens when their numbers go down. So your, your prey species numbers start going down on the graph in number, and there's a delay in time, and then your predator numbers go down because their food is now declining as well. Okay, so that's the, the basics. So yeah, we, we, we realize that we, we're facing massive challenges here. Um, and on top of it, lions causing increasing amount of problems with farmers, etc. And yeah, something had to be done. We started having huge consultation meetings, a lot of them very emotive um, with conservancies and communities, farmers trying to get an idea of what their needs and requirements are, talk to them about this, the situation. And out of, as a result of a lot of those meetings, um, a large amount of the content of those meetings, um, the, the Northwest Human Lion Conflict Management Plan was developed and endorsed and brought out as a policy by the ministry. That was 2017. September 2017, we had a, uh, uh, a pivotal meeting held at uh, B2 Gold's premises um, in which we got all the stakeholders and we were talking about how to implement this policy, roles and responsibilities, who's going to do what, how are we going to do this thing. And out of it there, we, we being um, IRDNC, were given four main aspects of, of the whole policy and the plan that we had to focus on that were you know, became our mandate.